Hello everybody, this is Mr. Navarrete, and today we'll be going over Lewis thoughts number three. For all these questions, it says draw the electron thought structures of the following atoms, identify their geometric shape, their molecular shape, and now we have to identify their dipole moment. So let's get started. For our first one, we're working with a hydrogen molecule. So each hydrogen is going to have one valence electron. So our Lewis thought structure should look a little something like this. And then we move them together, create that bond between them. Each hydrogen is gonna have two shared electrons and because it's in the first period, it'll have a full shell with only those two electrons. The geometry type that it would have would be A2 since it is a diatomic molecule, meaning that it's gonna give us a geometry type of linear here we have to identify whether it has a dipole moment or not. Each hydrogen is gonna be pulling the electrons equally as much. So it would have no dipole moment. So it'd be non-polar. For our next molecule, we're working with an iodine molecule. Each iodine is gonna have seven valence electrons. So our dot structure should look something like this. Because it is diatomic, it's gonna have a geometry type of A2, and then that's gonna give us a molecular shape of linear. Now, again, we have to see how they are pulling the electron pair that they are sharing. And because it is diatomic, they're gonna be pulling equally. So it's gonna give us a nonpolar molecule. Next, we have beryllium hydride. Beryllium is gonna have two valence electrons. Each hydrogen is gonna have one. So our dot structure should look a little something like this. Beryllium only has two valence electrons, so it can only form two bonds. Hydrogen is gonna have one valence electron, but because in the first period, it'll be happy with those two electrons, it'll have a full shell. Looking at our geometry type, it's gonna give us AB2, which in return gives us a molecular shape of linear. Now, hydrogen is gonna be pulled, or those electrons are gonna be pulled equally in both directions. So we're gonna end up with a nonpolar molecule. For our next one, we have boron chloride. Boron is gonna have three valence electrons. Each chlorine is gonna have seven valence electrons. So when we draw our dot structure, it should look something like this. Boron can only form three bonds because of those three valence electrons. So it'll be stable and happy with like that. Each chlorine is gonna have eight valence electrons. So it'll have a full shell. So We're gonna end up with a geometry type of AB3 because we have one central molecule, three things attached to it, and that's gonna give us a molecular shape of trigonal planar. Now, when we look at the dipole moment, looking at our dot structure might not be very helpful, but if we draw its shape, we see that the chlorine is gonna pull evenly in all directions. Even though they are diagonal to each other, each chlorine is gonna be pulling equally left and right. And what is left over when they're pulling up, they're gonna be canceled out by this chlorine on the bottom. So we're gonna end up with a nonpolar molecule. For our next one, we have methane. Carbon is gonna have four valence electrons. Each hydrogen is gonna have one. So when we create our dot structure, it should look something like this. It's gonna give us a geometry type of AB4 because we have one center molecule with four things attached to it. And it's gonna give us a molecular shape of tetrahedral. And very similar to our last one, looking at our dot structures might not help us find whether it's polar or nonpolar. When we look at our molecule, each hydrogen is gonna be pulling down along with whatever direction they're facing, whether it's right, left, or you know behind the page. Those diagonals are gonna cancel out so that mainly what we are kind of working with is the hydrogens being pulled from below and, and above the page. They're gonna cancel out because it's gonna be the same strength. It's gonna give us a non-polar molecule. For our next one, we have nitrogen trihydride. Nitrogen is gonna have five valence electrons. Each hydrogen is gonna have one. So when we draw our dot structure, it should look something like this. We have one center molecule and three things attached to it. 
So that's going to give us, we have one center molecule, three things attached to it, but we can't forget that lone pair that's on top. That's going to give us a geometry type of AB3E with a molecular shape of trigonal pyramidal. And again, finding the dipole moment might be a little difficult looking at our dot structures. So if we draw it out, here we can see each of the hydrogens is going to be pulling diagonally, meaning that it's going to go down as well as whatever direction our hydrogen is. But it's not going to be strong enough to pull or kind of counter our lone pair. So we're going to end up with a dipole moment going towards the lone pair, making a polar molecule. Next up, we have a water molecule. We're going to have one oxygen with six valence electrons and two hydrogens with one valence electron each. So our dot structure should look something like this. We're going to have one center molecule with two atoms attached to it and two lone pairs. That's going to give us a geometry type of AB2E2, which gives us a molecular shape of bent. Looking for our dipole moment, looking at our dot structures might not be too helpful. So if we draw our shape, here we see the bent shape where each hydrogen is going to be pulled towards the oxygen. Our lone pairs are just going to be two electronegative where our hydrogens won't cancel it out. Our lone pairs aren't directly below and above each other. They're at an angle, but that angle does cancel out. Well, we are going diagonally right and diagonally and left. We're gonna, leave, we're gonna be left with a dipole moment that only goes up. So we do create a polar molecule. For our next molecule, we have phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus is going to have five valence electrons and each chlorine is going to have seven. And so when we draw our dot structure, it's going to look a little something like this. Each chlorine is going to have eight valence electrons and phosphorus, because it's in the third period, period or below, it can hold more than the eight. We have one center molecule with five things attached to it. That's going to give us a geometry type of AB5 and a molecular shape of trigonal bipyramidal. Drawing the molecular shape of it, here we can see this little triangle base forming the pyramids on both sides. And because of that, this chlorine is going to cancel out the pull of each one of these. The chlorine above and the chlorine below are going to cancel out. That's going to give us a nonpolar molecule. Next, we have carbon dioxide. Carbon is going to have four valence electrons and oxygen is going to have six valence electrons each. When we draw our dot structure, it should give us something like this. Carbon is going to be double bonded to each oxygen, allowing it to have eight electrons. Each oxygen is going to have eight. So they're all going to have a full octet. We have one center molecule with two things attached to it. That's going to give us a geometry type of AB2. And looking at our chart, that's going to give us a linear molecule. To find the dipole moment, well, oxygen is going to try to pull those electrons towards it, but so is this one. They're going to be equal in strength. So it's going to give us a nonpolar molecule. Next, we have an oxygen molecule. Each oxygen is going to have six valence electrons. So when we draw our dot structure, it should look something like this. Each oxygen is going to be double bonded to each other, allowing it to have eight valence electrons each. Because it is diatomic, it's going to give us a geometry type of A2, which means its molecular shape is going to be linear. And just like our previous one, each oxygen is going to pull those electrons towards it with an equal amount of strength, which gives us a nonpolar molecule. Next up, we have a nitrogen molecule, which is going to be very, very similar to our other one. Each nitrogen is going to have five valence electrons. So when we draw our dot structure, should look something like this. Nitrogen is going to be triple bonded to each other. And because it is diatomic, it's going to give us a geometry type of A2, which gives us a molecular shape of linear. 
And because each nitrogen is going to pull those electrons towards it with an equal amount of force, it's going to give us a nonpolar molecule. For our next one, we have carbon tetrafluoride. Carbon is going to have four valence electrons. Each one is going to have seven. So when we draw our dot structures, it should look something like this. Carbon is going to have eight valence electrons. Each fluorine is also going to have eight valence electrons. We have one center molecule with four things attached to it. That's going to give us a geometry type of AB4, which similar to number five is going to give us a molecular shape of tetrahedral. And just like number five, all of the electronegativity are going to be pulling in all directions equally. So it's going to give us a nonpolar molecule. Next up, we have phosphorus trihydride. Phosphorus is going to have five valence electrons, and each hydrogen is going to have one. So when we draw our dot structure, it should look something like this. Phosphorus is going to have three things attached to it, as well as that lone pair. So that's going to give us a geometry type of AB3E, which is going to give us a molecular shape of triangular pyramidal. And just like number six, that lone pair is going to be pulling a lot, lot stronger than all of the hydrogens. So it's going to be a polar molecule. And we'd have a dipole moment going up. Next up, we have sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur is going to have six valence electrons. Each fluorine is going to have seven valence electrons. So when we draw our dot structure, it should look something like this. Each fluorine is going to have eight valence electrons. And sulfur is going to have more than the eight because it's in the third period and below. When we look at our geometry type, we have one center atom, six things around it. That's going to give us a geometry type of AB6, which in turn is going to give us a molecular shape of octahedral. Finding the dipole moment again from our dot structure might be a little difficult. So if we draw it out, so that we're going to create this octahedral shape. More importantly, this fluorine pulling from below is going to cancel out with this fluorine pulling from above. And all of these fluorines are going to be pulling equally with each other. This one is going to cancel out this one, this one, this one. So we end up with a nonpolar molecule. For our next one, we have boron triiodide. Boron is going to have three valence electrons. Each iodine is going to have seven. So when we draw our dot structures, it should look something like this. Boron only has three valence electrons, so it's going to only be able to form three bonds. Each iodine is going to have eight valence electrons. One center atom with three things attached to it gives us a geometry type of AB3, which gives us a molecular shape of triangular. And just like number four, all of those iodines are going to be as far away from each other as possible on the same plane which are going to make a nonpolar molecule. Next up, we have phosphorus trifluoride. Phosphorus is going to have five valence electrons, and each fluorine is going to have seven. So when we draw our dot structures, it should look something like this. Phosphorus is going to have eight valence electrons. Each fluorine is going to have eight as well. We have one center atom attached to three other atoms, and we can't forget the lone pair. That's going to give us a geometry type of AB3E, which gives us a molecular shape of triangular pyramidal. And just like number four, our lone pair here is going to overpower the electronegativity of all of the fluorines. So it's going to give us a polar molecule with our dipole moment being up. For our next one, we have silicon tetrachloride. Silicon is going to have four valence electrons. Each chlorine is going to have seven valence electrons. So when we draw out our dot structure, it should look something like this. Silicon is going to have eight valence electrons. Each chlorine is going to have eight. We have one center molecule attached to four other things. So it's going to give us a geometry type of AB4, which gives us a molecular shape of tetrahedral. And just like number five and the other tetrahedral examples we've covered, the orientation of our atoms allows your electronegativities to cancel, which will give us a nonpolar molecule. For our last one, we have sulfur tetrachloride. 
Sulfur is going to have six valence electrons and chlorine is going to have seven each. So when we draw our dot structures, it should look something like this. Sulfur is going to be able to have more than eight valence electrons because it's in the third period or lower. Each chlorine is going to have eight valence electrons. We have one center atom attached to four other things. We can't forget that lone pair. It's going to give us a geometry type of AB4E, which gives us a molecular shape of seesaw. Finding the dipole moment from our dot structures might be a little difficult. So when we draw our molecule, this is our seesaw. Each of these chlorines is going to serve as, you can see, the fulcrum. These chlorines are going to be where we would sit on the seesaw. This chlorine pulling in this direction is going to cancel out with that one. This chlorine will cancel with this one. The dipole that we see would come from our lone pair. So the dipole moment that we see would be towards this direction, towards the lone pair, and that's going to give us a polar molecule. And that's it. If you have any questions on the homework, don't forget to send myself or Mr. Morgan a message on Schoology. Other than that, stay safe and I'll see y'all next time.